Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service today. We're very glad to have you all here. And if there's any guests or visitors, please don't, please don't forget to sign our guest register in the back. And for those who are taking communion, we have the communion registration sheets in the back of the church as well. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 228, Come Rejoice Before Your Maker. service for the service of word and sacrament. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. For I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. 
The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. For without your help, we are unable to please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament lesson is recorded in Numbers chapter 11, verse 16, and then 24 through 29. So the Lord said to Moses, gather 70 men from the elders of Israel for me, men whom you know to be elders and officers for the people. Take them to the tent of meeting and make them stand there with you. Jesus went out and told the people the Lord's words. He gathered 70 men from the elders of the people and had them stand all around the tent. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him. He took from the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do it again. Two men, however, remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. They were listed among the elders, but they had not gone out to the tent. The spirit rested on them, and they prophesied back in the camp. A young man ran and reported this to Moses. He said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aide from his youth answered, My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? If only all of the Lord's people were prophets, so that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. The epistle lesson for today is from Philippians chapter 1, starting at verse 12. Paul writes these words. I want you to know, brothers, that the things which happened to me actually took place to advance the gospel. And so it has become clear through the whole palace guard and to all the rest that I am in chains because of Christ. And through my chains, the majority of the brothers in the Lord have become much more confident about daring to speak the word of God fearlessly. 
Some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, and others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am placed here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking they can cause trouble for me while I am in chains. What does it matter? Only this, that in every way, whether for outward appearance or for the truth, Christ is being proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. Here ends our epistle lesson. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is recorded in Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. Jesus said to him, Teacher, sorry, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. We tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not try to stop him because no one who does a miracle in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil about me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Amen, I tell you. Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to fall into sin, it would be better for him if he were thrown into the sea with a large millstone hung around his neck. If your hand causes you to fall into sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go into hell, into the unquenchable fire where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your foot causes you to fall into sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your eye causes you to fall into sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt loses its flavor, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Here ends our gospel lesson. Hymn number 349, Jesus Priceless Treasure.
Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior. The word of God for our meditation this morning is again a continuation of our look at the book of Philippians. This is chapter 2, verses 19 through 30. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. For everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs, because he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him, and not only him also, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less, less anxiety. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honor men like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. Here ends God's word. Please be seated. Well, dear Christian friends, over the weekend I had the opportunity to take some time and watch a documentary and it was a documentary on the, uh, what they call the Redeem Team. In 2008, a team was sent to the Olympics to get the gold medal back that they had lost three times in a row and received a bronze. And now they're determined to go back and get a gold. It wasn't because they didn't have good players. They had those good players. Every year that they played, they were NBA players. But they had not learned to work as a team. And so they found it difficult to match up with really good teams that played as a team and made them look bad. But in 2008, we were determined to rectify that problem a coach was named, teammates were picked, and they worked for three straight years to get ready for one event, the Summer Olympics. And then it just showed their bonding and growing together to work as a team. They still were their great NBA player selves, but now they knew how to work as a team rather than as just talented individuals. Well, I like basketball, so that was very interesting to me. And as I was going through Philippians chapter 2, 19 through 30, kind of struck me the uh, teamwork that was necessary that Paul talks about in this specific section. And so I got as our theme, it takes teamwork. And it has two parts. Timothy, Epaphroditus, the team. But then the bigger team is also there because they have an owner, God. He is the one who is in charge of everything for them, and they have their coach, Jesus. And so everything that they do is done out of love, for their Savior, Jesus Christ, and it's all based on what God has spoken in the Scriptures to get his message out to all people. And Paul is very, very good at doing that, of putting Christ first, making him 
the center and the circumference of his circle of life. And in all that he does, he wants to make sure that he glorifies Christ. And in his actions and he plans, he adds in a phrase that we've come to know very well, if the Lord wills what God wants, that's what he wants to do. And he wants to carry that out in the best possible way. And he talks about, in, in good length here, about his two very important helpers. One of them is Timothy. He says, I better do this one, right-hand man. And um, he is a fellow gospel preacher, teacher, worker. And as he is spoken about in this section, Paul piles on words of praise for, Jesus, for uh, Timothy in all that he has done. Paul has been, Timothy has been Paul's helper in the establishment of the Philippian church. And like Paul, he has a great love for the spiritual welfare of the Philippians. And that was second nature to him. And so when Paul talks about Timothy, he talks about hoping to send Timothy to you soon, that I may also be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in their welfare. Timothy felt that personal connection and relationship to that congregation in Philippi because he was there when it was established. And he helped Paul as it was being established. And as Paul wrote back from all of his times that he would write to the congregation there, he would always include news about Timothy. And now he's going to, God willing, look forward to sending Timothy back to them so that Timothy can come back, step in, help out, lead, guide, um, encourage, and strengthen the congregation there until Paul is able to return. And then when Paul eventually does return, Timothy may stay there again, or he may go along with Paul on another one of his missionary journeys. So now God, God has great plans for Timothy as a worker and servant in the church. So it takes teamwork. teamwork. And one important member of that team is Timothy. As we have heard our scripture lessons for today, we heard about different examples of teamwork. Moses, he had his brother Aaron right next to him through the majority of his time leading the people through the wilderness as well as dealing with Pharaoh. And Aaron has a very important role as the high priest of God's people. But in our reading, we heard about God anointing 70 of the elders and the leaders with the Holy Spirit and giving them an opportunity to prophesy and to give Moses a team that he could work with, that could help him on that 40-year journey that is going on. Now, there, there's going to be lots of troubles during that 40-year journey where, you know, sometimes the leaders aren't that much help. But he has them for his encouragement, for his strengthening, and for his help. And the Lord will use them at different times throughout that long journey. Two that weren't even there, they also prophesied. And Moses was happy to hear it. And he wished that everybody could have that opportunity to be a servant of the Lord and to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. In our gospel lesson, we hear about someone coming to Jesus and saying, someone did a miracle in your name. And the disciples wondering, should we tell him to stop? And Jesus immediately stepping in to remind them that someone who's working for Jesus is on our side. And if they're not against us, they are for us. And what they are doing, if it is in agreement with God's word, the Lord will bless it, rejoice. But 
this work is being carried out. Jesus had his team, 12 members, many other followers. He taught them. He encouraged them. And when he went back to heaven after his ascension, his team, minus one, but plus another, went about their work of spreading the gospel to all nations. As Paul goes on in this section, he says that there's a lot of people that are around who want to be on the team, but really don't want to be because they're selfish. And they think about their own needs and their own interests, and they want to try to look like they're a part of the team, sit on the bench and cheer, but, but not get into the action. Uh, there was once a story about an individual that um, joined the church, was very excited to be a part of that new church. And then as they're asking for uh, volunteers of who can help with this and who can help with that, his comment was, I'd love to help in an advisory situation. Yeah, thank you. That advice probably will be complaints. And it may be helpful, but it's not what the Lord is looking for us in our works and our lives. There's all kinds of excuses that people can bring up. Jesus dealt with that. All of God's leaders have dealt with that. The excuses are always there. And yet, that's what they are. They're excuses. They are man-made focus, man selfishness, rather than service to our Heavenly Father. Timothy is going to be that helper that will be going back. And the people can be confident that he will carry out his work. But at this time, Paul needs Timothy with him more than the people need Timothy to be with them. He promises Timothy will come, but it will not be at this moment. Paul needs that individual to be with him, to sympathize with him, to encourage him, to give him his hope and joy. And, and Paul in the letter of Philippians keeps on bringing out his hope and joy so many different times. Paul's got another member of the team that he's going to bring in to be able to help as well. Epaphroditus. He's a tongue twister. I don't think I've ever heard of a baptized a child named Epaphroditus yet. Um, that would be significant. Some people do pick biblical names, but usually they're ones that we're good at for pronouncing. Epaphroditus. You just say it to yourself. Epaphroditus. He came to Rome, sent by the Philippian congregation. He's not a pastor. He's not a teacher. He's a member of the congregation in Philippi, but he wanted to come help. He wanted to bring a message. He wanted to be in service to Paul and to the Lord. And on his way, he got sick. I mean, this isn't a journey that just is accomplished uh, buying a ticket, and getting on the plane and flying there. It, it's a journey that takes time. It's a dangerous journey, and you never know what you're going to hit into. And he got sick along that way. He got so sick that he almost died. And under Paul's care and help, they eventually were able to nurse him back to health. And the congregation at Philippi had heard news that he had been sick, very sick, and almost died. And, and Paul writes about that as well, of how much he had gone through. He, indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him. Not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Paul was so concerned about the life of this individual who had come to help him that if this man would have died, that would have you know, broken Paul's heart to have lost a co-worker, a helper, a part of the team who was concerned about him in love. 
And then he writes, he's better now, and I need to send him back so that you can see that he's better. He will give a report. He will tell you what's going on. And we can all rejoice that the Lord has seen him through this work and this journey and the trouble that he went through. Sometimes when those difficulties come up, they come up hard, they come up fast, and it seems like it never rains, but it storms, it floods, it hurricanes. I mean, that's, when things get bad, they can really get bad. And yet the Lord wants to encourage us that we will continue to act in joy. And so his words about Epaphroditus are, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor men like him, for he almost died in my service. Be joyful about this teammate who was carrying out work, nursed back to health, helped Paul and Timothy to the extent that he could, but the reality was it was time for him to go back and encourage the Philippians so that they could know their loved one was good, he can report about Paul and Timothy, encourage them that Timothy will be coming back as well, and that Paul has it in his hopes, in his prayers, to joyfully be able to return to them at some point in time. The Lord always gives a team to help work. When we send missionaries out into the field, they try as hard as possible not to isolate any one of those missionaries too far from others because they know how important it is to keep in contact and to encourage one another and to realize that you're a part of the team. And now with the video conferences and everything else that we can do, they can stay in contact from the headquarters in Milwaukee to the farthest points in the world and still keep encouraging one another and let them know that the people at home are praying for you, that the congregations at home are working to support you, and that the other missionaries are also working on your behalf as well as a team. Now, in, in our area, boy, we've got a lot of congregations around here, and they're, they're almost all full now, which is such a good thing. Uh, St. John's in Nodine have their pastor installation November 6th. St. John's in Lewiston is continuing their process of calling. Their first call was turned down. Pastor Lind uh, Lindemann is there, but sometimes having that partner for a bigger congregation is a great thing. But we have other partners, we have other teammates in every congregation. And that's the people who are in the congregation. You're part of the team. You're part of God's team. Jesus has called you to be a part of that team. God has equipped you with the word and the sacrament to grow in your faith and knowledge about our Savior as a part of that team to carry out our different roles, to help out wherever possible, to remember in prayer all the different situations that come up. It's not just to pray for, for the pastor, but it's to pray for the members. And when those prayers come forward in the church, it is a joy to be able to do that, to know that it's not just me having a prayer, it's, it's everyone thinking about that and praying uh, throughout the next week as well. I have my councilmen to help. I have uh, the volunteers that, that do so much, and it's all a part of the team. I, I like being on this team. <laughs> um, I've enjoyed it for a long time, and I, God willing, hope that I get to have longer time to be able to jo enjoy that. Uh, Robin and I have talked frequently that we love being here. It's, it's a privilege for us because we have people that help, people that are loving and concerned, and people that step in 
to take care of a wide variety of needs. And so God gives us joy of being a part of the team here at St. Luke's and Pickwick, here as members of the Western Wisconsin District, as members of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, as members of the Worldwide Church of Christ, where many other congregations throughout the world are also in fellowship with us. And we get to be a part of that special team. We enjoyed it when our missionary from Brazil, Charles Walker, was here to see how we can encourage him, and he comes to encourage us, and I think he's getting very close to going back right now as he's preparing for his next six months back in Brazil. God gives us these blessings, and he reminds us it takes a team, and Jesus coaches that team for every one of us. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. We will now continue with the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. The responsive prayer of the church is in the front of the hymnal on page 32. 
page 32. We have one special prayer to offer this morning. Uh, we're pleased to be able to announce that Mary Jo Modest was able to come home from the hospital on Monday and then found out right away that she has a blood clot in her leg and she's taking blood thinners and treatment to not only get rid of the infection, but also the blood clot. And we continue to offer prayers on her behalf. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood, which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering, and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need, and to help them with deeds of kindness. Compassionate Father, in your mercy, you transform even sickness into a blessing for your children. With this confidence, we commit all who are sick or suffering to your tender care. We pray especially for Mary Jo Bottas. Provide healing and relief according to your infinite wisdom and boundless mercy. Grant patient endurance if her situation may linger. Help her find true spiritual strength through Jesus and his cross during this time of physical weakness. By the work of the Holy Spirit, continue to teach her and all of us to trust in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Hear us, Lord, as we also bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith, and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He protects and preserves his church in every age and gives us confidence to lift up our heads and watch for Jesus with joy. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
The video portion of our service will end at this time with the blessing, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated.